Today you will learn what are high order components in React, do we still use them if we have React hooks and how to refer to high order components in React hooks code. So here I already prepared a single component for us. As you can see I have a create React app, here is my app component and inside I have repos component. Let's jump inside repos.js and as you can see it's a class. So we don't use here React hooks, we are writing classes in React. And yes, classes and Hyoda components is a little bit older approach to write React applications, but you will still find a lot of React projects which are still using classes or Hyoda components. This is why at least you need to know how to cook it. So here I have a repos class which is a React component. And as you can see inside constructor we have a typical state with this loading data and error, which means we are fetching some data inside this component, while loading we are setting is loading to true, and if you are getting some error then we are saving it inside error to show on the screen. And here is our fetch data function which we are calling on component did mount. And as you can see inside we have a URL, this is github URL to get all my repositories of my user. So here we are using fetch, then we are parsing JSON, and if we successfully got our JSON we are setting inside state our data and is loading. If we have an error we are setting is loading false and our error. And here we have a rendering, so first of all we are rendering loading state, if this state is loading in true, then here we have an error state, here we simply rendering our error message, and here is our markup, so when we have the data inside this state data, this is an array and we just render the list of these URLs. And this is how our application is looking like. As you can see we loaded our component, we fetched this data from GitHub and now we rendered these three links. Now the question is what does this code has to do with high order components and what is high order component? Actually a high order component is a function which will return a function which will return a component. And it may be difficult to understand this, this is why we will build an example. And as you can see a repos class is a typical example where we fetch our data. So we have is loading data and error and we are fetching something. And exactly the same approach we are doing again and again in all our components where we need some data. This is why it makes sense to move this logic outside of our component and higher the component is the best place for it. This is why here I have a file with data fetching, and actually we are prefixing all our high order components with with, and this is a code style which is typical for React. Now the question is what we are writing inside. So here we want to create a function with data fetching, because we want to implement fetching of our data, and we want to provide some parameters inside, at least the URL. This is why here we are just writing props so we can pass a lot of properties. After this we don't simply describe a function, we really want to return a function, which actually means we can put here brackets and write return and then one more function. But this code can be simplified, instead of this code we can write here arrow and then here the arguments of the function that we want to return, because this is simply an arrow function in the single line. And now inside the argument I want to get a single argument and this is wrapper component and now here we have just a normal function. So what we have here, we have a function which returns a function and inside we are passing our props, which actually means our usage will be with data fetching. Now we are passing some properties inside, for example URL, and here is our URL, and actually this code returns us a function, which means inside we are passing a component, and in our case it will be for example our repos component. And this is the typical usage of our high order component. Why it is high order? Because actually it's just a wrapper around our component, which brings additional logic to our own component. Let's comment this out and implement our logic. So actually what we want to do here, we want to create a class, for example, with data fetching. And here we want to extend it from our React component. So here we can write extends component and now on the top we need to import our component from React just like we did previously. Now the question is what we want to implement inside this class and how it will work. The main point is that here we want to return our class with data fetching. 
So the idea is that this part returns a component, so with data fetching is our class that we just created. But we didn't write anything about our wrapper component. And what is wrapper component? This is our repos component. This is why here inside the class we can write render, just like we do normally, but inside instead of just a markup, we will return our component. In this case here we must call our wrapper component and we can provide here whatever we want. And normally we want to provide here some additional properties and after this our props. So at least here we must provide all props, in this case we can use our component as normal. Now we need to copy some logic from our repos class. This is why I will jump here and copy fully our constructor, we don't need it here, and I will simply paste it in our component. The main idea is that this state we now have inside our class and not inside specific usage of specific component. Now here we have a sync fetch data and it doesn't belong here at all because we will implement it inside our class. So I copy it fully but the only problem is here URL, actually it's not coming from here, it should come from props. So actually here I will remove this URL and instead of URL here inside fetch we can write props.datasource, which actually means we must provide inside props this URL where we will fetch our data. Now I also need to copy this component did mount inside our function. So actually component did mount happens inside our class and not in our repos. And now here we simply have a render just like we normally do. But it's not all because here inside render now we have access to our state. And what we want here we want to provide more properties inside our wrapper component. This is why here we can get our data is loading and error from our state that we defined on the top. This is why here will be this state and now we can provide these three properties inside our component as a props. This is why here we can simply write data equals data. Now here we have is loading property which equals is loading and the last one will be error which equals error. In this case we provided all three properties and after this all our props. So now we successfully wrote our high order component. Now let's try to use it. This is why here I will remove this with data fetching and put it inside our repos.js. So now actually here we don't need to export our repos, we want to export our wrapper with repos inside. So here we can write export default and here will be with data fetching and inside we are passing our URL. But actually we named it inside props data source, so it's not URL but data source and here we must provide this URL. So this is how it looks like, we have a with data fetching and its function and we are providing inside some props, in our case it's just data source. And this function returns for us a new function. And inside this function we are passing this repos component. And the main idea is that we are using this component to render it inside our class, because in other case we don't know what component we need to render. And now what we are getting from it, we have inside props these three properties, is loading, data and error. Which actually means here, inside render, we can just get them and use them without creating a state. This is why here I can simply the structure is loading, data and error from our these props. So now the only thing that we need to do is change this state to this props is loading and here will be this props error message and inside if also and here not this state data but this props data. Now let's save this and check if we have any errors. And yes we have an error we didn't import here with data fetching. This is why on the top I will import with data fetching from our file with data fetching. Now I am saving it and let's check we have an error, so we tried to import with data fetching, but we forgot to write there an export. This is why we must jump back inside with data fetching and as you can see here we have this const, but we didn't export it. This is why here on the bottom we can simply write export default and here will be our with data fetching. And as you can see now we are not getting any errors and let's reload the page. And as you can see everything is working like previous, but now we used high order component instead of just writing this logic inside class. So as you can see high order component helps us to move some logic outside of our component and it makes it reusable for other components.
What is even better, now inside our repos.js we don't need to write a class here, because actually we simply have here a render function and we can convert it to just normal stateless function. This is why here I can write const repos and this is just a function, so here we are getting our props and here we can destructure, our props is loading, error and here we have our data. Now we don't need render, but we simply return everything that we need and here we don't need this bracket. And instead of our this props loading, we can simply write this is loading. Now here we have error, and here we are rendering our error message. And here on the bottom we have not this props, but just data. Let's save this and we don't need this import of the component anymore. Now I am reloading the page and everything is working like previously, but now this is a pure component where we don't have anything. But this is not the modern way of doing things. Inside React now we have React hooks, this is why we are not using high order components anymore. And the question is actually why. As you can see here we have this strange syntax where we are returning a function of a function and really often we need to combine several high order components, like for example here we are writing with router and we are returning here a function. Which actually means we are wrapping it with one more function and now you need one more function and so on. And the main problem is that all this stuff is outside of our component. And yes, from one perspective it is fine because our component is really small, but from second point it's not exactly clear how data are coming to our component. This is why inside React hooks we have completely opposite approach. So what I want to do now is show you how we can convert high order component inside custom React hook. This is why I want to copy paste this component completely, this is completely fine for us. And now here I have one more file, reposhooks.js, and I will paste it here. Now I just want to rename this component from repos to reposhooks and export it here on the bottom just like normal component. This is why here we are writing export default and here is our export hooks. Now we need to jump inside our app and change our import. So here I have repos, hooks, and we are importing it from file repos hooks. And now inside our app we want to render our new component repos hooks. And actually our component is fully ready, but we need somehow to implement getting data inside this component. And for this we want to create a custom hook, which actually means with classes we are using high order components to make shareable stuff for components and inside React hooks we are building own custom hooks. This is why here I want to jump inside my new file use data fetching and we are prefixing all React hooks with word use so we can understand that this is a hook and now inside I just want to create a function. So here export default and here we just need a one argument and this is data source. So we Exactly like we did previously, we must get here the URL. Now what I want to return back from our hook is an object with three our properties. First of all it is its loading, secondly its data and the third is our error. Our next step here is to create state for all these three properties. And we are using here just normal use state hook from React hooks. So here we have our is loading and here is setter, set is loading. And here we are using use state hook from React and our initial state will be true just like it was previously. Now I can copy paste this line two times and create here first of all our data and here then we have set data and our initial data was an empty array. And the last one is our error. And here we have our setter, set error. And the default value is null. Now we want to fetch data here somehow. And actually, as you can see on the right, inside our with data fetching, we used this function fetch data. And actually, we can fully copy paste it because it will be almost the same. So I copied our async fetch function and now here we want to write use effect. Why use effect? Because asynchronous logic we are writing inside React hooks inside use effect. So here we have our use effect. Now inside use effect I will paste our function fetch data. Now this is not a valid function. This is why we need to change it to error function. So here we have const fetch data and this is just a function and we need to write that this is an asynchronous function. So we just created a function and we just want to call it inside our use effect, which actually means every single time when our use effect is triggered, we are fetching data. Now as a second parameter inside use fetch, we are providing our dependencies and in our case it will be data source. And what is data source? This is a URL, which actually means every single time when we update our URL, we are fetching new data. 
Now we need to update our function a little bit, so this fetch is completely fine, JSON also, but this state does not exist here. What we want to write instead, we need to call our setters. So first of all here we have set is loading, and we are setting is loading to false, and secondly we are setting our data to our JSON that we just got. And now we can successfully remove our this set state. And we are doing exactly the same inside catch, so here set is loading, and it is false, and the second is an error, so set error, and inside we are providing our error dot message. And now we can remove this state. And actually we successfully finished implementing our custom hook to fetch any data from any API. Now I want to jump to our file repos hooks, and here we can bind our custom hook to get data. So we won't get our data from props like we did previously, but instead we will get them from hook. This is why here we are getting an object back, and here we are calling our use data fetching that we just created. And inside we must provide our data source, and this is a URL. And I think this code is much more understandable than high order components, because we are not returning a function of a function, we simply use a function here, and we are providing inside a URL. And now back we are getting here our error, secondly is loading, and the third is data. And actually this data here will directly be updated every single time when we are refetching our data. This is why all this React code with rendering our component is staying the same. We simply got these properties from another source. Now let's check if it's working. I'm reloading the page and we are getting an error props is not defined inside use data fetching, which actually means I forgot to change something. And as you can see here inside fetch, I still have props, we don't have props anymore, this is just an argument data source. Let's reload page again, and as you can see everything is working. Now we are using React hooks, and we are fetching data with our custom hook. And this custom hook is fully reusable, we can fetch any data from any component. So on the real example you saw the difference between high order components and custom React hooks. And also, if you are interested in 5 most popular React interview questions, don't forget to check this video also.